Hello, welcome to Climbing Daily. We're here at ISPO and I'm at the Arcteric stand trying to source as much free gear as humanly possible. Now recently we released a series with Richie Patterson called Old Dog New Tricks. You guys seem to really like it, so we thought we'd interview him to find out a bit more about the process. I'm Richie Patterson, I'm now 51 years old. Um, I'm what you call probably a climbing lifer. I've been doing it since I was 11 years old, I think, and uh, my mum dragged me along to an outdoor activities club. Um, I only took up climbing since I, I nearly drowned when I was on the canoeing course, so I thought, hmm, maybe something a little bit safer. 8B plus in, I think now it's 363 days, uh, less than a year before I turned 50. It's, um, it's possibly a midlife crisis. The idea for the challenge, well, like I say on the videos, it, it, it was a bit of a midlife crisis. I'd, I'd been living out, well, I'd moved out to Spain. I'd kind of just started climbing again. I'd had quite a few years off after a bad shoulder injury and a couple of operations. I didn't really think I'd ever climb seriously again, but then you get the bug. And once you get the bug, it's impossible to stop and I started looking around and I started noticing people were, were climbing incredibly well. Everyone was at such a standard that it made me think something's going on, something's happened in climbing that I've missed in the last 10 years. It was really when I met Tom Randall and I was working with him at Wild Country for a bit and when I first met him, to be honest, and he won't mind me saying this, he was rubbish. He was one of these climbers, he was very keen but I climbed with him and he was a terrible climber, but then suddenly he improved massively. So I thought, this guy knows what he's doing. He's got a trick that, that I need to know. So um, I approached him and uh, yeah, he was willing to help me. Okay, so bring your shoulders just forward a touch more. That's it, yeah, just there. So you feel, do you feel a little bit of a stretch as well? Yeah, yeah. Okay, yeah. that's good. Then bring it back down to the Y. Yeah, and then back down to the T. Oh my god, my right shoulder isn't like that. Okay, that's perfect. So, for the first couple of months of what we do, is we need to work that range of motion. Because okay. basically, if I chuck you really hard exercises when your shoulders are doing this and yeah. they're really unhappy, you'll get injured. So, lesson number one, avoid injury at all costs. So I think Richie's chance of um, achieving his goal of 8B+, plus, uh, at the moment, lies about 50-50. So physically, he is capable of it. Um, but if we factor in his previous history, these history, issues with injury, um, I would say I would err on the 25% likelihood. So I would say he's unlikely to do this. Choosing Tom was a kind of, it, it was an obvious choice because I knew him quite well, but also when I'd been working with him at Wild Country, I'd seen what was going on in his, at that time, in his back garden. You know, it was a very Heath Robinson thing, but I'd seen this, this machine, this testing rig, and I'd heard rumours of things that were going on, and I, and I noticed that even kind of superstars were talking to him. Um, and when I talked to him about his approach, it seemed very, very interesting. And the great thing about Tom is, he is a very, very determined person. So I knew once he got his teeth into something, there would be definitely something there, something behind it. If we look at the results here and where you were a year ago compared to now, one of those fundamental factors that we wanted to work on was the efficiency that you're getting out of your climbing, the fitness elements. Yeah. Because you were a relatively strong climber and to achieve that 8B plus grade you need to get a lot fitter, a lot more aerobically fit. And if we look at the results from today, the amount of time and moves that you spent on the board massively increased. Really good improvements. Okay. If I was to put a number on it, and where you are physically now, what's going on in the forearm, I would say you're at 8B.8. You're like a margin off. Okay. You know, you're not quite at that 8B plus standard. You're very, very close. When I started the challenge, I mean, I, I wasn't like I was climbing badly, um, it was just I'd kind of reached the glass ceiling. I could climb up to about 7B plus and in about, you know, half a dozen red points I'd get up here and, and sometimes even fewer. But I just ran out of, as soon as, as soon as I was on something with a hard move, I couldn't do it. It hurts. 
okay, hang on. When, when you've plateaued, when, when you're not climbing badly, but you're just not making any gains, it was, it was kind of, can I just do this on the rock or do I need to reevaluate the approach? Yeah, I wasn't in great shape, but I've always been a reasonable climber, so I wasn't unhappy, I just needed something more. The most difficult part of the year for me, psychologically, was I was going really, really well in mid-August. Um, the training was fantastic, I'd suddenly just kicked up a level, I felt so fit. Um, but then, I just, I didn't listen to Tom and I went climbing. The problem is I live near 900 routes, brilliant sports routes, so I, I knew I shouldn't have. I was tired, but oh, there was just this one route and uh, and again I got injured and that was just before yeah. Steve came out. Yeah. And so when oh. Steve got here and I went on the 8B+, plus, I was literally back to square one. I couldn't even do the 7B easy bit at the bottom. Steve arrived a month later and I was totally bummed that it didn't look like I'd better climb with him. After four weeks off I'd only just started training again so I thought I'd start by getting his advice on that. So uh, yeah this is where I train. Um, it's pretty good really I and mean, it's owned by the local club. Uh, the, what's the word you're looking for? It's um, old school. That's the word. Suits me perfectly then I think. Being old. <laughs> So, great 8B plus that one, one of the best I've done for ages. Big moves, good holds, not super technical, it's about right for the grade. I'm not sure it's the right one for Richie though, it, it could be okay, but it's quite far from where he lives. I don't know, 50-50 so far. The year's been really interesting as well, just because of the re reaction of a lot of people. Um, it's, it's been hugely positive um, and people have been really interested in a kind of more of an everyman journey. Um, I'm not a climbing superstar, yeah a long time ago I used to be quite good but now I'm just like everyone else trying my hardest to get better and people have been massively supportive and positive and, and, and that's been one of the biggest things of the year. You know whether you climb 6C plus or 8B plus isn't the point in climbing, it's a psychological game, it's a mental battle and I think people have enjoyed watching someone else struggle and, and kind of hopefully it's led them to you know think about their training, think about their climbing and, and try and think about improving. Looking at the results from today's testing, we obviously had this imperfect test method, we've got two interesting things that we found. One is that we've got a much better rate of recovery, so you're getting fitter, you're enduring. The amount of feedback and, um, and support I've had, you know, the, I think the key what's next in climbing is to keep things going. And that's always the key, is to just not, not rest on your laurels. And that's what Steve taught me actually, is to, you know, you achieve one goal, you know, pick another goal. Um, and I think the interesting thing about being older and training is that you've got to keep it up. Um, you can't rest on your, laurel, your laurels. You have a month off and you're back to square one. So I think the important thing is to, is to build it all into your daily life um, and, and stay fit, stay strong. I don't know, absolute projects, I'm not sure. It would be nice to climb 8C. Um, there's some big wall stuff up on Pika Urieu near where I live that would be amazing to do. You know, multi-pitch eight. Um, something I've never thought would be possible. Um, maybe that's a different level of fitness, I'm not sure, but there's plenty out there, that's the thing with climbing. And some trad projects in the UK. At heart, I'm still a trad climber. I've got E6s to do in the UK, which I've been wanting to do for 20 years, you know. There's plenty to go at. Cheers Richie, I've put a link in the copy to those episodes and the final one is coming out on Thursday. Right, I'm out of here.